Either one, it is currently the 13th of September 2014, making this update right around 00 Universal Standard Time, and we are continuing the track and intensifying Tropical Storm Kalmiki, also known as Luis here in the Philippines, and as you can see here on our streamline flow on the wind map, uh, really this storm system is continuing to gather some steam just towards the east of Luzon, still pulling in those winds from the west, so we are continuing to see some heavy rainfall actually across western portions of Visayas. And as you can see here with our 72-hour rainfall outlook, actually some areas of western Visayas are looking to see upwards about two to 300 millimeters of rainfall. So despite being removed from the center of circulation, a lot of people are going to be impacted from this storm system. So in this update, we're going to be breaking down what's happening right now with it, where is it going when we're going to be seeing landfall, and what are going to be the impact. Well, for starters, as we take a look at the satellite imagery here on Saturday morning, we are continuing to see this organizing the radio imagery inflow is definitely there. You're seeing more of that circular motion inflow coming in from the north. Also plenty of moisture wrapping in from the south. This is the big problem as I mentioned uh, across the size and the now. Yes, the storm system is expected to make landfall out here around Cassiguran and Pelnan there in Aurora over towards Iligan and possibly uh, in, off there towards Cagayan. But the thing is you still have that moisture inflow farther down towards the south. So even the Cebu area you could be looking at that threat of flooding all across Visayas as that flow continues to push in. And also, as that is occurring, we're going to be seeing this storm system intensify. It's just adding to the fuel available for it. Furthermore, sea surface temperatures under it uh, definitely supportive, upwards about 30 degrees plus. That combined with this relatively low vertical wind shear we are seeing, this is actually uh, the JTWC track overlaid on this, but these areas in the yellow, that's indicating the amount of wind shear. That difference between the surface winds and the upper level winds and you want less than 10 to 15 knots for a storm system to further intensify. What we're seeing just north of it is about 5 to 10 knots of shear and also just down here towards the south, upwards about 20 knots. So a little bit of shear on it, but it's enough to allow actually pretty decent outflow. So we're still seeing this storm system continue to intensify as it tracks off here in this west-northwesterly uh, projection. Now, how strong exactly is it going to be getting? Well, the thing we did see a change uh, from Friday and Saturday is the Japan Meteorological Agency is now forecasting the storm to become a typhoon prior to landfall. You can see here tropical storm strength, but rate right at landfall upwards about 120 gusting to 176 kilometers per hour. So that would be a category one storm system, but let's change it up over towards JTWC. They're keeping it much stronger around a category two, possibly three, 157 to 194. Uh, from what we have seen in the past, whenever we have a storm system entering this area of the Philippine Sea, it's just absolutely baking as far as the sea surface temperatures go. And what we typically see is some rapid intensification. So as far as the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's track, I know they're not the official agency, but actually I would lean more towards that type of intensity of a storm system uh, coming out of this. Now let's pull up Pegasus track because we really just want to see for comparison's sake what they're showing. As far as the direction of the track, actually they have it off a little bit farther towards north, right in line with JMA around Pelanon, and uh, still looking at that intensity pushing around the typhoon strength here as we look ahead. Also the key thing to note is that from Pegasa as Saturday morning, now this is definitely going to be changing as we continue to look ahead. Isabella, uh, southern parts of Cagayan, Aurora, Canton Dunas, uh, under signal force one. So that's indicating 30 to 60 kilometer per hour winds in the next day and a half. Let's go ahead and talk about the timeline here and when people are exactly going to be impacted. And as I mentioned, we're already seeing the rain showers across the size and southern portions of Luzon. And as we scroll ahead here, you see those winds really start to pick up uh, basically by Saturday night into Sunday, already seeing some gusty weather across southern portions of Luzon. Our storm system starts to make that north northerly churn, not so much northwesterly churn, uh, off there towards northern portions of Luzon. Now this is the ECMWF model, and it's kind of the northern outlier right now as far as our model outlooks are concerned because as you can see here, this is from the JTWC track and it has that landfall pushing on shore right around Cassie Goron and putting Pelanon here in the north quadrant of this storm system and I think that's a more likely scenario where you would be seeing these very damaging winds. Iligan just farther 
inland. Those areas would be seeing the very heavy rainfall as well. Basically, throughout the day here around Sunday, with the worst of it being by Sunday night and our storm system pushing overhead into Monday morning. By Monday morning, Manila would be seeing those westerly winds wrap around. And despite being removed down towards the south, I think tropical storm strength winds are also still very well possible for much of the NCR. Especially right near immediate coastal areas. This is actually the latest warning from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. And I like using them for this point because they show the extent of where they expect the tropical storm strength winds to be. And you can see the northern portions of the NCR are stretched out here. But don't be surprised if you do see those winds extend farther down towards the south, especially the gust. Uh, definitely will be extending out there. Now let's zoom in on this picture though and what I really want to take you down is towards the coast of Cassigoran where the storm system is expected to just move just north of. Now as I mentioned Palanon here over here towards the north. Now exactly where the storm system is actually coming ashore here into uh, Isabella it is some good news because Actually, this is going to be a very relatively remote area. We do have one town just off here towards the north of the center of circulation, and it's these smaller towns that are really, I think, are going to take the worst of this storm system if it does take that exact track. Now, as I mentioned, though, this area is relatively remote. Most of it actually is a national forest, a lot of mountains through here. And the problem is once you get that moisture coming on shore and hitting a lot of these mountains, especially right in here, you see in a tremendous amount of rainfall. So there is that serious threat of flooding. By the time it works a little bit farther inland, it likely will be a little bit weaker, but still San Mateo, San Mateo excuse me, San Santiago City, Iligan City, uh, these areas are all going to be looking at that threat of heavy rainfall and even landslides. So really the worst of it will be here along the coastline. Cassie Goran, of course, you're still going to be seeing some rough weather with this. And then Pelanon farther off there towards the north if the storm system was a track into that direction. All right, guys, that's really the direct impacts we're going to be seeing from this right now. I do want to scroll back the picture. I don't want to forget about this. The track eventually looks very, very similar to Rumasu. Soon. Even Hong Kong should be keeping an eye on it. Right now we are concentrating on the Philippines, but if you are farther off there towards the west and you're tracking the storm system, it's coming. And Hong Kong could be actually go through some storm warnings here as it does push towards the south. Uh, upwards about two to, two to three could be possible if it stays on this track, but it could even waver farther towards the north. So by Tuesday and the Wednesday, for those of you out here, you want to keep an eye on this one and see exactly what's going to be happening. But right now it is Saturday. We're still continuing to track it as always if you are being issued evacuation advisories don't fool around with this uh, even though it is a low-end storm it's still gonna bring a lot of rain and still a very serious threat so as always stay safe out there everybody and uh, once again thanks for watching all right bye